now let's look at the recording. So how do I record a podcast um, in in general? And I'm, I basically took the one of the more common scenarios here to give you this as a kind of starter or as an example, because you can illustrate quite a lot of things here. And the the most common scenario nowadays or quite often is um, that you have two speakers and that you record in kind of an interview style. So let's let's use this use that as a generic theme for for this um, for for this workshop at least for now. So the most important thing right there is that you um, record one track per speaker, and I could not. Um, I, I could not possibly uh, overstate the importance of that. Um, your future self will be quite thankful if you record one track per speaker. Um, you usually do that by using two mics, um, one mic per person, and you channel um, both mics to your computer via a audio interface or a sound recording device. Um, we'll get into the different devices later on, but for now, just remember that usually your PC, your laptop, your um, tablet will not be able to record two tracks um, uh, at the same time, um, which is why you want to um, use a device in between. So that's that. And you also need software for that. Uh, and the software that I would recommend you can find on the left hand side that's um, for example ultraschall ultraschall is an open source project that plugs into reaper the digital audio workstation that some who um, make their own music might be familiar with but there's also a audacity a logo that most people have seen at some point in their lives um, which is an open source digital audio workstation that is not as um, well suited for recording podcasts as Ultraschall. Ultraschall is basically built to record podcasts. So the whole workflow that you can, um, that you that you want to follow is basically um, coded into Ultraschall, which makes it really interesting and nice to, to be able to record with, with that. Um, there's also, if you're into screen sharing uh, from, from teaching, for example, or recording, screen recording, stuff like that, uh, some of you might have heard or have been using uh, open broadcaster software, which is open source as well, and that you can use, especially if you're on a Linux device, because Ultraschall, as far as I know, uh, doesn't isn't yet supported by Linux. There's also Anchor. Um, some of you might have heard about that one as well. Um, I wouldn't generally recommend it, and we'll get into why later on. But um, to get started, to, to check out if you want to record a podcast, if you want to try things out, Anchor might be a, a good choice as well um, to get a feel for, um, for a certain podcasting setup or to, to check out whether podcasting in itself is something for you. Um, I would not recommend GarageBand under any circumstances, um, but some people still use it anyways. And I also put down the logo of Hindenburg, um, a software that is most commonly used on, among radio folks um, here as well, um, which I wouldn't generally recommend. But if you're already familiar with, for example, Hindenburg or also Adobe Audition, you can use that if you want to. Um, apart from the software, there are a couple of tips. Um, and one of them is that when you record a podcast, um, usually depending on the scenario that you, that you want to aim for, headsets are great, especially for longer recordings, um, because you always have a certain distance between your mouth and your uh, mic, and you don't need to keep uh, at a certain distance or hold your mic to your face or whatever it is. You want to watch out for echoes in large rooms, obviously. And um, as I mentioned, try to use equipment and software that helps you down the road as well. So the best and the worst way to become an audio nerd, if you're not one already, is to do a quite uh, to record under very bad certain circumstances, because then you will have to clean things up, then you will have to edit, then you will have to um, turn down echoes, you will have to level all that kind of stuff. Um, the better that your recording is, the easier it is to do everything um, down the road. Let's take a look at what makes um, a good room to record in. Um, the smaller the room, the better is a general um, 
rule of thumb. Um, but also try to take a look at the, let's call it acoustic insulation. So if you have any blankets, curtains, rugs, even bookshelves that you can use, please do use them in order to enhance the um, audio quality um, of, of your room. So if you're in a large seminar room, for example, and you um, notice that there's quite an echo, pull down the curtains, um, see if you can find any umbrellas and um, and open them in the room, put them in, in the different corners. So to reduce any kinds of echoes and hall effects, um, there's plenty of tricks that you can use. And of course, but um, I couldn't I always hesitate to put this in, in my slides, but do switch off all um, notifications, doorbells, alarms. Um, I don't know how many podcasts I've listened to where um, that, that that kind of triggered me to check whether I've gotten an email because somebody didn't uh, didn't turn off their email notifications. So um, these are like the the more general rules. Um, there's plenty more, but this will um, this will help you to to get going. I also brought a couple of recommendations for headsets, mics, recorders, and interfaces. And this is a vast, broad range of um, tools, obviously. Um, but I hope to have a list of a couple of devices that I think are good to get you going, depending on the scenario that you want to work with and depending on, on the whole conceptualization of your podcast. Um, these are the devices that I would generally recommend and I would encourage you to take a look at them um, and then see what else comes up. Um, people who have liked this device also like this device is great for browsing through what can I imagine myself using for my podcast, what seems to be a good fit. Um, there's USB mics that you just plug into your computer. Remember that would mean that you only have um, one track and that usually means that you should only be recording with one speaker um, if you don't take any other precautions, um, at least for, for best sound quality. But there's also XLR headsets. Um, some of you might, might know these. So basically, you plug them into something like this. I don't know if you can see my webcam, but you have um, different XLR um, uh, adapters um, that, that you can use. Um, so stuff like that. Um, will give you quite good audio quality generally. Um, there's also USB headsets, which um, I don't usually recommend, except for the one that I listed here. Um, that's the Biodynamic Custom Game. Um, I'm not, we're not sponsored in any way by Biodynamic, but it's kind of the, uh, it's become somewhat the, at least in the German potosphere, the, the let's call it gold standard um, in terms of um, headsets and, and um, um, microphones to some extent. So the DT297 and 797 um, are really good and work well, but also quite costly. And the Superlux HMC um, with a couple of tricks and, and um, you, can, you can also make it sound quite, quite good and, and um, produce a well-sounding podcast with them. There's also a couple of recorders and interfaces. Check them out if you want to, and, and let's get into that later on during our workshop. When you record a podcast, and that's kind of something that more that the German community is more keen on than the international community, to be honest, but I would highly recommend it, especially when you're talking about science podcasting and making information accessible to others. You want to talk about chapter marks and chapter picks even. So chapter marks are basically chapters that enable you to jump in a podcast between different chapters. Um, you can enrich those chapters with chapter picks. I brought a couple of screenshots here, how that would look depending on what kind of um, podcasting app you, do, you use. But basically, those are then encoded in the metadata of the MP3 that you are delivering at the end of the process. And you want to start thinking about them up first. When recording a podcast, um, just to keep it in the backs of your heads, um, try to think about edit marks as well. So when somebody coughs or some a door gets slammed or whatever happens, um, put down an edit mark to enable your future self to find that spot in the audio and mute it or cut it out or edit it in any kind of way. 
And of course, you also might want to be thinking about intro or outro music that you can already add at the beginning or the end of your scenarios or even to separate different chapters if you want. Um, show notes, three exclamation marks. Consider show notes right from the beginning. When conceptualizing your podcast and your podcast episodes, um, you will probably have a list of questions you want to ask, a couple of links that you want to uh, run through and make those accessible to your um, to your listeners as well, to your audience. Um, that's one of the big things that, to my mind, separates all, uh, podcasting, for example, from radio, to make information accessible on, on different kinds of levels um, and not just via audio. So if you want to make information accessible and knowledge accessible, consider using show notes. That's it for the recording part.